It's January and this is the Library Roadshow. On the show today, yearbooks, a new kind of print job, and renovation updates. Welcome to the January edition of the Library Roadshow. I'm Mary Stein and this is a production of your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. As we enter the year 2020, we invite you to take a fresh look at your library. New resources like Wonder Books and interactive tables, new services like credit card functionality, and new spaces are visible throughout the library system. The library's Career Center keeps upping their game. They've planned a full schedule of free workshops and programs designed to help grow your career opportunities. I especially like the vision and planning workshop scheduled for Bluebonnet, perfect for this new year. Our small business service is ready to help you look at your business through fresh eyes too. This free service works with small business owners and entrepreneurs providing one-on-one -on -one consultations and assisting them with the library's powerful tools for starting, managing, and optimizing their business or nonprofit. I'd like to highlight a new series for kids. Reading is Elementary, 1,000 Books Beyond Kindergarten, kicks off this January at all locations. Designed for independent readers from kindergarten through fifth grade, kids will earn a patch for every five books they read. After book 50, each child's name will be entered in a drawing to win gift cards and other donated prizes. New partnerships with LSU and the Baton Rouge Botanic Garden Foundation have yielded great results too. A year-long series for each on the second Saturday of each month. Garden Discoveries kicks off its new year with Gardening for Hummingbirds, and Saturday Science delves into Brownian motion and gravitational wave research. For a different kind of motion, how about the film documentary featuring Louisiana bluesman Henry Turner Jr. and his band Flavor? We're also featuring Stuart Tully and the history of swamp pop in Louisiana, and football standout Charles Jefferson. We're partnering with Census 2020 to offer programs all spring and save the date for cultural gumbo and why am I disorganized in February? So much to see and do. Dates, times, and locations of these and dozens more free programs, movies, and workshops are all available online and in the January edition of The Source. Check it out. Free access to books, audio, and library resources are just a few of the benefits available to you when you get a library card. Need free access to a computer? You get that. Want free access to premium digital resources like Mango Languages and Lynda.com? You get that. Need to book a meeting space? You get that. Heck, you can even check out a telescope or use a digital printer with your library card. If you live in East Baton Rouge Parish, pick up your free library card from your local branch library today. Premium access to everything the library system has to offer is waiting for you. For every kind of service or resource that the library offers in the real world, we also try to offer something to parallel it in the digital library. We know that many of our younger emerging readers are especially drawn to colorful books about animals and books filled with interesting scientific facts. So we searched for a companion service that you could access remotely from home. And we found it in a new resource called AbdoZoom. Adam St. Pierre joins us now to explain in the digital download. Are you a homeschool parent looking for more engaging online activities for your kids? Or an educator searching for another way to present information to your students? Well, your library is pleased to present to you a new resources for kids pre-K through second grade. You can find videos, interactive games, and printable activities. This online resource has three major sections, animals, biographies, and STEAM. You can play games like Match the Predator to the Prey, What's It Made Of, and Who Wasn't U.S. President. And there are also teacher resources from kindergarten to second grade. And it's all free with just your library card. To check out ABDO Zoom, head over to the digital library page at ebrpl.com. Thanks, Adam. This new database fills a real niche in our offerings for the earlier elementary grades. 
It's fun and easy to use. Kids will jump right in. Let's shift gears and check in with Kayla Perkins reporting in from Beyond the Stacks. A lot of our programming is educational, some is inspirational, and some is just plain fun. This falls right into the latter category. Take a fresh look at your library in 2020. We've got a variety of fun programs and free resources just for you. Just like this movie night on the plaza at the main library. Let's check it out. Movies on the Plaza is a free program where families are invited to come together and enjoy a great movie. The program is seasonal. During the 2019 holiday season, we hosted two events, which include this one, featuring the 1993 classic, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Hi, I'm Shai, and I came to the movie, to the library to watch a movie. The movie I watch is The Nightmare Before Christmas, and I like The Nightmare Before Christmas because because they have Sally and Jack Skeleton and the mayor. Did anyone think to dredge the lake? This Movies on the Plaza event occurred on Friday the 13th. The dark and the chill in the air really set the scene for the movie. Plenty of people came out to watch. Hi, I'm Carmilla. I'm a mom of two, and I'm here to watch the movie tonight. <laughs> so I bring my family out a lot to these programs. Um, I bring them out it's a lot of good family time. We spend together. Before the crazy weekends get started. <laughs> so it's real fun to bring the family together. I love it. <laughs> Moviegoers typically bring their own lawn chairs to movies on the plaza. It's kind of fun to watch a classic film on such a large screen outside. But if sitting outside isn't your thing, know that we simulcast each movie inside in a large meeting room as an option. The library hosts a broad range of programs for every age and interest. And just like your smorgasbord at home, some of it's really good for you and filled with nutrients, and other things are just fun, kind of like popcorn after dinner. So tonight we'll have a little bit of the fun. That's good enough for me. What a great movie. It's only January, so the fun's just begun. To find out what's coming up next, pick up a copy of our monthly newsletter, The Source, or visit us online at www.ebrpl.com. Our next Movies on the Plaza series will be in the late spring. Keep your eyes on our online calendar for details near the time. Mary? Thanks, Kayla. As you can see, we like to mix it up. Our spring programs offer a little science, a little culture, and a lot of fun. Stay right there. After the break, Assistant Library Director Patricia Husband joins me for a chat right here on the Library Road Show. Hi, I'm Ken Jung from the new movie Wonder Park. In the film, a young girl finds a fantastical amusement park straight out of her childhood imagination. For a magical adventure of your own, look no further than your local library, which has books, games, and activities promoting creativity and discovery. Find something wonderful at your library. Do you wonder how your family landed here? Do you really know your family roots? Discover more about your family history at the East Baton Rouge Parish Library Genealogy Department. East Baton Rouge Parish Library. Become a member and discover more. You're watching the January edition of the Library Roadshow. Everything you need to know about your local library system. In addition to sharing signature events and new resources, we like to keep you informed about what's going on behind the scenes. So from time to time, Assistant Library Director for Branch Services, Patricia Husband, joins me for a renovation update. Okay, Patricia, I've heard the expression phase two an awful lot over the last couple of weeks. What is happening out at Greenwell Springs? Well, we completed phase one and have been in there since the end of August. Um, that area has new study rooms, it has more has space for more computers, it has some beautiful new restrooms that don't even have doors. It's airport style, it's isn't it? It's airport style, yeah. so it's a lot easier to get into. And we have a new water fountain that will fill your oh, water bottle oh yeah, that's and the count bomb. the number of bottles you've saved. There you, that is really cool, too. So, yes, so people have enjoyed it, it. It looks so light and fresh. People are enjoying the colors, the new carpet. Um, they're just enjoying the space in general, and it's nice to have the small study rooms because people do come in and use them on a regular basis. Sure, just like here at the main library. Exactly. Okay, so what's left? Basically, everybody moved into the newly finished Phase 1 space, and they're working on the Phase 2 space. What's involved in all that? The Phase 2 space is primarily children's and teens. 
So we're going to have a new teen area that's separate and apart oh, that's from so the other wonderful. areas. Everybody it's wants really, that. <laughs> yes, it's really going to be nice. And um, the teens will have their own program rooms, their own lounging space. We have some cool furniture that we selected Just like for here them. at May. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. The children will have a really nice space, and we'll have a special space for toddlers, and we'll have some uh, a nice program room for story mm -hmm. times and crafts mm -hmm. with beautiful colors. We have colors above. We have colors below. We have colors in the flooring, and I think they're just going to really enjoy it. It's going to be a, a, an updated version. We're going to have more computers, and mm -hmm. we're going to have just lovely furniture and great shelving. I love that. So what's the timeline for final completion for the Greenwell Springs Road Regional Branch Library? Well, they're estimating that we'll be completed with phase two around the end of February, and then we have the middle to take care of. Oh, yes, and the business part. The business part, <laughs> yeah. the lobby. But, mm -hmm. and I forgot to mention this, our meeting room, our large meeting room, should be available sometime by the end of this month, uh, the end of in December. December, we'll be using it in January. Yes, right. we'll be using it in January, and so that's a, a wonderful new addition. Mm -hmm. We we just did the punch list. Right, walk I've already through. walked through it. So it's it's going to be ready before phase two is finished. And of course, power and data everywhere. Yes. Lots of power, <laughs> lots of data, lots of new places for people to work and study in. So our furniture is going to be installed at the very end of the project. And that way we'll have some really updated furniture that, that fits the way people work and study today. So by the time we start the summer reading club, it's going to be jamming over there, won't it? I expect it will. Now, rolling over to the south side of the parish, what is going on at Jones Creek? Well, at Jones Creek, we just finished moving into phase one. Mm -hmm. So we've got lots of shelves put in a very much smaller right. space. It's incredibly <laughs> cozy. Yes. And um, we do have some study rooms mm -hmm. that we have available for patrons. So we had about five or six or seven study rooms. Not all of them are available for patrons right now because we have to have some space for the staff. But we have two or three that are available right now for patrons to use. We have a new space for additional computer training, but mm -hmm. our computers have not arrived yet. It'll happen. And we've got some beautiful acrylic, twisty, decorative areas that, that uh, patrons really loved when we showed them, and so they'll be installed soon. Mm -hmm. We've got a new print release station. We've got more computers, or space for more computers uh -huh. at this time. So they'll be coming. That all will be coming. And, and what's the overall timeline for the Jones Creek Project? Because they've just started phase two. They've just rolled in, uh, uh, what do you call it, temporary porta potties, but fancy. Uh, they've... Uh, crammed everybody into the completed phase one side, and they're just going to rip through phase two. But it's going to take a while, won't it? It will take a while. We, we're we thinking 10 months, okay. but I would say give it a couple of months either side. If things get really rolling, they might be finished a little bit earlier. Chances are there will be some unexpected things. There always just are. Because We've got a, an existing building, sure. so we're thinking closer to 11, maybe 12, but we hope to be in there before then. Okay. Well, I want to remind people that uh, the details for these plans are all available online uh, at our website, ebrpl.com. You can see the info guide. You can see the plans before and after, and every now and then we throw in a few new pictures. But why have you planned this in phases at all? That's a question that I get a lot. Well, part of the reason we planned it in phases is because we want to continue to remain open. There you People go. People still like to come and, and visit their library. And in fact, when I looked at the gate counts, for Jones Creek, they had decreased a little, but not as much right. as I would have anticipated. Right. People want to go where they're used to going. Right. So, so the thing to remember in this phase, too, is that the large meeting rooms will not go away at Jones Creek. We will still have those in addition to the small study rooms. People have asked me that. Mm -hmm. The second thing is we do have temporary outside restrooms. Mm -hmm. They are trailer restrooms, not porta potties. No, no, they're deluxe. So and we, <laughs> we do appreciate the public's patience with that. Right. 
it's great. So a lot of things to come, a yes. lot of blueprints to go through. And uh, I know it won't be long before you'll be gearing up for the next project in the capital renovation timeline. That is true. After the break, Shanna Forrestal, plus book reviews with one of our younger library patrons. All that and more coming up next on the Library Roadshow. Hola, ¿cómo está usted? Buenos días. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help, and slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Why the Girl Became a Cat is a children's book about inclusion, empowerment, and finding your purpose. Author Shanna Forrestal joins me now by phone. Shanna, when did you get your start as an author? So I got started writing, um, gosh, I've been writing pretty much my whole life, but not a book. This is my first book that I've authored, and I'm really excited about it. Um, I was basically in a really bad car wreck um, two years ago, and I was in severe chronic pain, and I ended up having to stop working for a while. And during that time, I just kind of thought about some of the things that I hadn't accomplished with my life that I wanted to do, and there were a couple creative projects, and uh, this was one of them, that I that came to my mind, and I was like, if I don't do this, I'm just not going to have the legacy that I want to leave. So this is a fun children's book. The story idea had come to me pretty quickly, and I just, I think it just kind of summed up um, some things that I had been thinking about, and... Um, so I decided to go ahead and get it in book format and uh, and get it out there. So, yeah, this is my first book as an author. What's your book about? The book is about a little girl who decides to try on the idea of being a cat. She has all these options ahead of her, which is what the book is about, just letting little girls and all of us know that, you know, we have options in life and that we have the ability to go after our dream, to go after our passion, and to become anything we want to be. But the little girl decides to be a cat for a little while, and so the book is about her adventure as a cat and um, and just all of our adventure that we have been uh, just, you know, trying to figure out who it is and what it is that we want to be, and we hope that people walk away um, just encouraged to really pursue whatever it is that makes their heart light up. What inspired you to write this book? I was inspired to write the book when I was hurt um, because I had come up with the idea and that just seemed like a good time to do it and to go through the process of publishing. But, um, you know, growing up in South Louisiana, I don't think I knew that I had all of the opportunities that I had available to me. And I just feel this urgency to encourage young people and really to just encourage anyone to go for their dreams. You know, I work with um, young people on the autism spectrum and uh, was able to actually hire and mentor uh, four young men on the autism spectrum with this project. And so my illustrator, Matt DeGaia, is on the autism spectrum. And when I had the book written, I reached out to a friend of mine that I knew was in a school that's training these young people. And I said, hey, do you have anybody who's an animator illustrator? Because I, that's a gift that I do not have. <laughs> I can't even draw a stick, man. And she said, sure. And so I met with Matt, and I loved him immediately, and I really appreciated the empathy and um, insight he brings when it comes to the relationship between animals and humans. And I had seen his uh, his short film that was about animals that he had uh, animated, and I just knew that he would be the one to bring this girl and her cat to life in the book. Um, so he was a real inspiration to actually get it done, and then along the way we hired um, a young man to shoot video for us, and we hired a young man to do editing for us, and we hired um, another young man who put that the digital piece together. We actually have a digital copy of the book online as well, and um, it has all the girl sounds and the cat sounds, and it just brings the world to life, and that was also created by a young man on the spectrum, and so we're really proud of the hard copy and also the digital book that's available right now. What are you working on next? 
Um, our next project is in the works. We can't talk about it too much right now, but all of the proceeds from the first book will go to help us hire and mentor these young men again for a second project. So we are working on that, and um, we'll be rolling that out on the site, the Why the Girl site. That's going to become a brand, um, and we'll be rolling it out on the site there. So keep watching, and you can see what we're doing next. How can our viewers learn more about you? You know, if you want to learn more about what we're doing, the best place to go is just to our website. It's whythegirl.com. And right now there's information about our our first book, Why the Girl Became a Cat. But there will be information there about future projects as well. And also um, just to follow me um, and some of the other venues that I do storytelling in, which are films and things like that, um, they can find me at forestdollconsulting.com. And that's F-O-R-R-E-S-T-A-L-L consulting.com. Thanks, Shanna, and good luck with the project. It's now time in the show where we like to check in with one of our younger patrons to find out what they're reading at the library. Hi, I am this, and I am five. My favorite book is Biscuit. This is Biscuit. Biscuit is small. Biscuit is yellow. Time for bed, Biscuit. Woof, woof, Biscuit wants to play. Time for bed, Biscuit. Woof, woof, Biscuit wants a snack. Time for bed, Biscuit. Woof, woof, Biscuit wants a drink. My mommy brings me to the library. My favorite thing is to do at the library is to play hopscotch. Thanks, Amethyst. We love to see what our younger readers are enjoying. Stay right there. You're watching The Library Roadshow. Constance Wu. Did you know that Crazy Rich Asians was a book before it became a movie? You can still find books at the library, but libraries have so much more, including educational programs for families and opportunities for community engagement and professional development. So visit your library today. Do you wonder how your family landed here? Do you really know your family roots? Discover more about your family history at the East Baton Rouge Parish Library Genealogy Department. East Baton Rouge Parish Library. Become a member and discover more. My name is Melissa Easton and I'm head of the Special Collections Department at the East Baton Rouge Parish Library, located on the second floor of the main library at Goodwood, where history comes alive. The East Baton Rouge Parish Library's Special Collections Department is home to the Baton Rouge Room Archives. The mission of the Baton Rouge Room Archives is to collect, manage, preserve, and provide access to items that represent significant historical actions of local governments, businesses, residents, and institutions of the City of Baton Rouge and East Baton Rouge Parish. These items include, but are not limited to photographs, manuscripts, documents, periodical publications, audio tapes, and memorabilia. Perhaps the most popular collection in the archives is our yearbook collection. Home to nearly a thousand volumes, the yearbooks range in age from 1900 to 2018. The yearbooks are from schools that are or were in the city of Baton Rouge and or East Baton Rouge Parish. Aside from being a great way to take a trip down memory lane, yearbooks are also an excellent reflection of the social, political, and artistic climates of the times in which they were produced. This LSU gumbo from 1900 is our oldest yearbook. This image shows the LSU football team holding a ball with the score of the two-lane game from that year. The Tigers beat the Green Wave 38 to zero. Here we have a 1973 Southern University yearbook. The cover was designed by students. It was published the year after Leonard Brown and Denver Smith were shot and killed on campus. This 1958 Estrema High School yearbook cover was designed by a student named Milton Duke. Duke went on to become a renowned international stage designer for opera and film. Perhaps one of the most unique features of a yearbook in our collection is this small 33 RPM record included in the 1964 LSU yearbook. You can hear the LSU fight song written by Castro Carrazzo, samples of lectures, and the presidential address from that year. 
Our yearbooks do not circulate, but you can view them by either coming to the Special Collections Department at the Main Library on Goodwood, or visiting the yearbook chapter on our digital archive at www.ebrpl.com. If you would like to know which yearbooks are available, there is a complete inventory available online at the Baton Rouge Room Info Guide. The library currently has nearly 500 yearbooks available to view online, and we are constantly adding more, so check back often. You're watching the January 2020 edition of the Library Roadshow. Welcome to the new year. When you think about it, college yearbooks really started out as the social media platform of their time. Love seeing all those little heads. Come down and examine these great old photographs, trace your own genealogy, or just read up on the history of our great capital city. It's all available at the Main Library at Goodwood, and it's all free with your East Baton Rouge Parish Library card. The Blue Bonnet Regional Branch Library has this thing called the Innovation Space. It's a room where patrons can shoot a video on green screen, record and produce a podcast, you know, innovative stuff. Patrick Aberdeen manages the Innovation Space. My name is Patrick Aberdeen. I'm a reference librarian here at the Blue Bonnet Regional Branch Library, and we're about to have a 3D badging class. In order for patrons to be able to reserve the innovation space, we need to make sure they understand how to use the equipment. Badging classes are those training events. They allow us to certify, in a sense, which patrons can and can't use the equipment. Today, we have five pe uh, people registered. There was a time when we didn't have registration and it was first come, first serve, but the demand has increased so that we now have to have a registration and a waiting list in case people don't show up, then the next person can jump in. This badging class was all about the 3D printer. Patrick showed his group where to find 3D models, how to set up those models inside our 3D printing software, how to configure the machine, and he even shared some basic safety tips. We're going to learn Cura, which it was uh, the software that we use to import 3D files, and then that software interpret, uh, interprets it and sends it to the printer, and the printer actually creates it. If you want to sit in on a badging class so you can reserve the innovation space, call the Blue Bonnet Regional Branch Library. Patrick would love to get you all set up. Thanks, Kayla. We've really enjoyed seeing the participation and engagement with the new innovation space at Blue Bonnet grow across all ages and interests. We expect to replicate that excitement in other branches. New spaces at Jones Creek and Re Greenwell Springs will soon allow us to offer programs that provide a similar path to discovery and the makerspace at the New River Center branch is getting prepared now. We anticipate that it will become a prime spot for makers and innovators. And now for today's contest, visit the library's Facebook page at facebook.com slash ebrpl. Show me that one book you resolve to read in 2020. You know, it's the one you keep putting on the bottom of the pile. That's facebook.com slash ebrpl. And while you're there, enjoy. We're not your grandfather's library anymore. What's coming up on the Library Roadshow next month? I'll announce our 2020 Spring One Book One Community title. Tune in next month and I'll take you to a program that'll help get you up to speed for your New Year's resolution. And next month, I'll share another resource from your digital library with you. Thanks so much for joining us on the Library Roadshow. And remember, your East Baton Rouge Parish Library is open seven days a week at each and every one of 14 branches plus 24-7 on the web. Check us out at ebrpl.com. And that's how we roll.